I've been trying to film this video and I just cannot do it and I don't know why. I'm gonna try again. Okay. Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today I want to talk about something that's kind of convoluted and long which is why I think I'm having such a hard time filming this video but I wanted to come and share all of my favorite projects that I've done for the semester. I've done a lot of projects and I know that in like a lot of my vlogs you aren't really able to see the finished product a lot of the times and although I post a lot of this on my Instagram which you should go follow if you haven't already because there's a lot of finished products on there. Although I've done that a lot there's just a lot that I don't get to talk about so I wanted to come and make this video to fully flesh out everything about my favorite projects of the semester just because I love coming back and recapping after every semester and just kind of showing you guys my favorite things that I've done. So that's what I'm gonna try to do in this video. It's gonna be kind of long, but if you stick with me, I wanna also show you guys the ideas and the process behind it. That's all in my sketchbook that I have right here with me. And I'm planning on doing a separate full like flip through my sketchbook with me video so you can actually see what I'm talking about but you will get elements of how I came up with each of these projects in my sketchbook. So let's just go through it. So the first project I want to talk about is um, this project. So I have them all laid out in front of me. That's why I'm like thinking and looking. So I ended up doing a lot of 3D projects during this first semester as an illustration major, which was surprising because, you know, I don't really think of illustration as being 3D, but I did a lot of it. So for this one, I did this which is really, really cute and soft. And so the prompt was basically that we reimagine a piece from the RISD Museum. So I chose this piece from the RISD Museum, which is like the open farmyard, um, which was a Chinese like ceramic piece from a long time ago. I don't remember, 1600, 1700, 1500? I don't know. I'm supposed to know this stuff. I reimagined it to be something very soft and ephemeral because the original piece was basically based for burial purposes. And so I decided to make something that's more of a temporary object just because, you know, ceramics last a long, long time and obviously felted objects don't. And they're also very soft, which is, you know, completely the opposite from the open farmyard that was made in ceramic. But I still use a lot of these same elements. So for the roof portion, as you can see, there are a lot of similarities with the original piece. And so I wanted to keep that like structure intact. I added little birds on the top, which were mine. Like I, they weren't there before. And I also added a lot of windows and I added color to the piece, which I actually really enjoy. For my interpretation, I should add a little bit. And it ended up looking a little bit like a children's toy, which is also something I'm really interested in. So a lot of my stuff does end up being like commercial goods, which is just something I'm kind of interested in right now. And so as you can see, the lid totally comes off and you can see the inside, which was one of the interesting aspects of the original piece. So on the inside, there's a couple little animals that are rolling around. There is this guy who's a little goat, and then he has a bigger goat to take care of him. And then also I have this little chicken and this little pig, and they all live together in this little farmyard. As you can see, there's some dirt and some grass and some little bushes and stuff. You can see through the windows, so you can see all of these elements, which I really enjoy. It took a long time doing these freaking windows, I'm not gonna lie, but I really like the way they came out. And I love touching this. It's just so soft, you know? It feels really good. So I'm really glad this turned out the way it did. And you can close the lid. It kind of just sits on top. And if you have a good light source, you can see the little animals inside. There's also some pots at the top right here and right there in the front, just because they are in the original piece and so I try to keep that element. And as for the planning process with this one, there actually wasn't a lot of planning with this specific piece just because it's one of those pieces that requires more of like doing and less of thinking. So if I flip through my sketchbook and find it, this is the entire planning process. This is literally all there is. So I, I do my entire sketchbooks out of order. I just want to preface that now so that if I'm flipping around and I'm saying that this happened before this, just trust me, bro. Basically all there is for the farm piece is just this, it says, change into children's toys from permanent to delicate felting toys birds it says implement chain and clasps which i did not end up doing but was a thought and then here's a finished picture and that's all there is for that it's pretty much um <laughs> just me trying to figure out the logistics of it and that's about it. Moving on to the second piece. Second piece I want to talk about, I don't physically have. I technically physically have, but 
it's mounted onto the wall right there but i'm just going to talk about it anyway and it's basically right behind me and i will insert clips of footages of course with this piece it's basically a child who got lost in a circus and is trying to find their way around and he gets lost in all these different elements stilt walker and a bunch of clowns there's so many clowns i became randomly obsessed with clowns uh, not gonna lie and then there's also a lot of other elements there's a bear and a sword swallower and just all kinds of things and so i just kind of wanted to make this really fun and interactive piece that has a lot of colors to kind of captivate the viewer and also kind of express like what it feels like to be in a circus you know because i haven't been in a circus in a long time i would love to go and i miss it and i imagine this is what it would be like i think one of the very interesting things about this is that i got to use a lot of glitter so i love using glitter in my work I don't get to do it a lot just because not a lot of projects call for it. I think glitter is like a very sensitive thing to work with, especially if you don't want it to be tacky. But I think for this piece, it turned out pretty well. I have these cellophane sheets that I put on in certain elements so that it's very, very sparkly. And then I also use glitter pen. I used a lot of other things just to amp up the excitement of the piece on its own. So that's basically why I use glitter. I also just like using glitter because I personally like glitter. So I think that's valid. One of the also interesting things about this piece is the planning. So I'm really excited to share with you guys the planning of this piece. So it starts here and it ends all the way. There's more. There's more. There's more. There's more. Ah, and there's actually one more page. So there's a lot of planning that went to that project. So the clown project starts here and it was actually really difficult to do this project because I was really lost with the prompt for a long time. Ironically, the prompt was lost but not alone. I had a lot of different ideas. It says single 2D image, lost but not alone, forest with animal eyes, city. So this is just me like brainstorming different ideas. So here's random things, marker, pen, glitter, holographic shades, light wash of white. I don't even know what that means. Watercolor or colored pencil on top, which I did end up doing. I ended up doing marker with colored pencil on top, which is something I've never really done before, but definitely would recommend. Up, up, and away, kid cootie. <laughs> Random song lyric I remember from like eighth grade. This was the original prompt I was going to do. It was kids playing with parents, parents pushing on a swing. It was like all these kids with their parents and then there was one kid at the top of the playground with no parents. Um, kind of being lost, but I didn't really like it. There were a lot of issues. Not clear kid is looking for parent. Parents can have more than one kid. Race, do I want to bring race into this? Two meanings, kid lost parent or kid doesn't have a parent. Um, there were so many like aspects that I realized weren't solid in my prompt and I didn't really want to spend my entire time trying to clarify these issues or deal with these issues in the first place. So I decided to go for something else. But here's the sketch of originally what I was gonna do. This was the playground that I was thinking about. I have little elements taped in here and there of the finished product. So this is me thinking about how I was gonna do the line work. And this is done with a fountain pen, which I love using, but I couldn't use it because as you can see, Copic totally smears India ink. And I haven't found an ink that doesn't do that yet. So if you guys know, let me know in the comments. <laughs> wow, look at all these bad ideas. So this was the ideas I was having because my professor wanted us to bring in a couple sketches of different versions of what we wanted to do and I hated all of them. Bro, why did I choose to draw upside down? So for whatever reason, this is upside down. Last touches, glitter nail polish, check. Glitter pen, check. White highlights, check. And cellophane paper, check. Hot question. How to make it seem like he's lost. That was something I was having a problem with and I wasn't able to solve it for quite a while. This one says change to inside to outside, which was another concept that we had that we were able to pick, but I crossed that out because I ended up not choosing that. Here is basically the first original sketch of what I wanted to do. There's a bear, identical twins. And so here's how the actual crit went. OMG, long crit. Um, color palette is nice, lots of detail, good job capturing. There's also some negative things in there, obviously. I drew all of these during crit. Like I wasn't doodling while thinking. I typically go back and doodle during crit. This is all upside down again. I think this is just more thinking. It says storyline, um, wants to join the clowns, how to show he's lost, body language, question mark, dressed for different. So the thing is, we weren't allowed to use text. Here's the color palette. So this didn't actually come first. This came first. And a lot of people don't get to see this stuff, but this is the failure stuff. So this is basically all of the failed color tests, every single thing I did that didn't work. Um, a lot of people think that like, you get it on the first try and I just colored it as I went, but no, there was a lot of planning. I wanted to originally go with a palette that was like very bright, primary colors, very few secondary colors, just like in your face, but it was looking too gaudy that it was not looking good. Also couldn't find a background color that suited that. Introducing neutral tones did not work. And I 
tried to do alternatives, making it pastel also didn't work, which was usually my like go-to. So then I was starting to get really nervous. So I started thinking about alternative color palettes. And the last thing I ended up doing was this one. This one actually ended up looking not too bad. So I stuck with this one. I also usually hate using purple, but this time I used purple. So that's also why I didn't think about it. But as you can see, I did a lot of glitter pen on this too. And the cellophane sheets are on. So you can kind of see the idea. This is leftover cellophane sheet that I didn't want to waste. And on top, I made little notes about what I wanted to do. All emotes are yellow, leave trim white, popcorn all beige with dark center, add heart cheeks, like things I didn't want to forget. This is the new color palette, and this is the new, new color palette. So I was going to originally do this, ended up not doing it, and then now I'm doing this. So a lot of different things that go through um, making this concept. And then I just want to show you this one little thing at the very end that's kind of funny, because um, I drew it during crit, and I just think it's kind of cute. These are apathetic clowns. So he's like, oh, I, huh, oh, wow, what, uh, oh, so <laughs> I just wanted to make those because I thought they were really funny. Um, and I love drawing clowns, especially when they're this round. And then there's just a picture of the finished piece. A lot of the parts of this project just did not go as I was planning, which really, really sucked worked on the end so I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. The next piece I want to talk about very briefly, I'm very briefly going to talk about this project because I've actually already made a whole nother video on this and so I'm going to link that for you guys right here in the eye if you guys want to go see it. It will also be in the description box. It is this marsupials piece that you guys have probably all already seen. I mostly just want to talk about the planning for this one but here's just a quick flip through if you haven't seen that video but I highly recommend you go see it if you haven't and you can just see all of the different characters and elements that I put in here. There's a lot of pockets. I go through what's in every single pocket in the actual video. So please go check that out if you guys haven't seen it already. Like I said, I wanna talk about the planning for this piece. So the planning that's all in here is actually very crucial. That is because this required a lot of research. I knew a lot of this information already, to be honest, um, because the prompt was basically just to make an informational piece about something you know a lot of. And the running joke is that I know a lot about Australian marsupials for whatever reason, I retain all that information from eighth grade. But it required a lot of thinking about, you know, page layouts, and what information I was actually gonna put into it and the formatting of that information. And also just thinking about the formatting of the pages is also very difficult, especially when it comes to bookbinding. So a lot went into that. I'm very excited to show you guys the full process of how I got to this final piece that actually looks very finalized considering it's a sophomore year project. So the Marsupial project started off with this part where I was thinking, watercolor and text, Australian marsupials. Start off with introduction and go into six different categories, three pages per animal. So that's how I ended up splitting it up. This is really distracting. I'm gonna move that. That's what I decided to do. I knew it was gonna be a book binding project and the index, I had a koala, kangaroo, a wombat, Tasmanian devil, quokka, sugar glider, and wallaby. And one of these didn't make it in. I uh, wonder which one it is. I didn't have enough time to end up finishing all of it. This is my shopping list. Tissue paper, watercolor paper, scoring tool, blah, 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 blah. The size for the covers. Should I just do a kettle stitch binding? I guess a question I was asking the entire time, which I did end up doing a kettle stitch binding. Here's some information that I, I started doing some research and then here is the information on each individual animal. So that's on the wombat, the koala, the wallaby, kangaroo, quokka, sugar glider, and Tasmanian devil. It's basically just like my messy handwriting trying to figure out which animals I'm gonna do. And then here is the ideas for page layouts. I didn't stick to this very closely, but I, I stuck to it fairly well. So you can see like this was for the sugar glider, koala, Tasmanian devil, quokka, wombat, and kangaroo. And then this, what is this? Using online images of non-humans is usually okay. It is okay since, oh, okay. So this was like information my professor was telling me about how you would do this in the real world if you were to actually use image references from the internet. So I just want to keep that information because obviously it is important. And I think that's all the planning that went into this project. Yeah. And then here's some finished pictures. After that, I want to talk about my final project, which is actually not my favorite. I think I've been low-key ranking these in order of my favorite projects, but uh, so my second favorite is this project that I made that includes three little frogs. So this is a frog. The middle 
part and then the tadpole. I don't know what the middle part of the transformation between tadpole and frog is. Um, that's what they are. So I made these guys individually and the prompt was basically to create a character and make three pieces based off of them. But I wanted to, I knew I wanted to do something 3D for my final project. I thought it would be weird to have three of these same figure physically if I were to make it like 3D because if you make it a picture then you can you know just draw them in three different scenes or poses or situations or whatever but when you're doing it in 3D you kind of have to set it up in the character itself so I decided to go with a frog character because I thought about how I could manipulate it and if you think about it a frog has three life stages technically more and so I was able to create the same character in three different stages of its life that makes sense? So that was my loophole around it, right? Here's the character. So I'm going to start with the youngest one to the oldest one. And I kind of made them like merchandise. Like they all have this little tag. And someone actually asked me during class if I was going to sell these. I was like, are you looking to buy them? Oh my God. I wasn't expecting anyone to want to buy the stuff I made, uh, which is very interesting. But the name is Sir Lollyhops. That's the name I decided to give this character. Basically, let me just tell you, a frog character that's also a wizard okay very whimsical very cute what i was going for so sir lollyhops each of their tags are different so this one has the baby one he's a little tadpole on the inside he says hi i'm still very little but i can't wait to grow up and do big things a single small potion the first ever made so this is his little tag as you can see and their tag has a little bit of information about them and on the back of the tag has even more information where it says hello I'm a small tadpole all alone, but yesterday I made my first potion. It was so exciting, and I think from now on, I'm going to learn more spells and sorcery to one day become a wizard. And there's him peeking at the very bottom. I was intending to make them very charming and cute. As you can see, he's very small, alone little guy who only has one potion. Eyes are made out of polymer clay, and so are the cheeks. And I sewed them on like basically their buttons. And I wanted to show the stitching just because I thought that would be a very cute element to add to it. And their mouth is embroidered on, and they're all a little grumpy, which everyone commented on and thought that was kind of funny. And I thought it was kind of cute and charming, so I was like, they're little grumpy little frogs, you know? That's how it is. So here's the first one, the first iteration of Sir Lollyhops, baby stage. So there he is. And then the second stage, he grows a little bigger. And there he is. So he's got more than one potion now. He's got two little potions with little elements inside of it. What I basically put in these jars is beads and star glitter. And he has his own little pouch that is handmade. The professor pointed out very particularly, he really enjoyed that part that it was handmade. And then these eyes. So these eyes, like I said, polymer clay. He has a little tail, but it's changing a little bit. And he has two little front legs because he's growing up to be a big little frog. And he has this mushroom hat, which is actually removable. So I didn't want to glue anything onto like his head. Like all of these elements are removable. So basically you can strip him down to just like being a normal frog, you know, because that's how it would work in real life. You don't have things like glued to your body. So I wanted to make sure it kind of retained that aspect. And also I was thinking about in the future, if I were to continue this project, I was thinking of making like blind boxes and collectible toys for like more elements you can add on. So it only makes sense to make the original elements removable. But let's move on to the tag. So this one says Sir Lollyhops. Oh, and I forgot to mention on the corner of all of them, it says the stage. So this one says stage two. And it says, hi, I'm almost full grown, but not quite there yet. I can't wait to be older. And then I have written some information about the, the little accessories. So this one says small mushroom hat, still a work in progress. And belt with very important potions on the back hello i've been learning quite a few things about becoming a wizard and i think it's working i've been learning a lot and maybe one day i can be a master wizard and he's peeking in from the bottom again so they're all very soft by the way i think you can tell by the material but they're very fluffy and so i love holding them also a transformation that's worth noting is that their eyes become more and more sparkly so you can see there's like a little bit um like jewels and things that are accumulating on his eyes it's just a cute aspect that I was thinking about when I was making these. So that's part of the transformation. And then the last stage is my favorite. I love this guy. There he is. So here he is with his little hat and he has a butterfly wing cape, which I really enjoyed making. I loved making this thing. It's embroidered, hand embroidered. Um, here's the back, just some fabric. So let's just go through the front first because there's a lot to take in. He has one glass eye. This is meant to be a glass eye because 
You know how in all those potions always says like eye of newt or something? So he used his own eye for a potion, which is in this one because you know, it's a round one. So it makes sense. And his cheeks have fully formed into stars as opposed to before they were circles. And then the second stage, they were starting to kind of get there, but now they're like full fledged stars. So he has a cape, like I said, little butterfly wing cape because all things must be found in nature. There's a lot of bells on it. So it's super jingly. So he jingles when he walks. He also has this little harness now with three full satchels and he has these little potions that are attached by a safety clip which i wasn't actually intending on doing it's just kind of how it ended up working out when i was actually making this this again was one of those projects that although i required a little bit of planning i didn't want to plan too much just because i wanted to be able to work with the material instead of like going halfway and realizing something isn't working and then feeling stressed about it because you can kind of work around these issues with projects like these where it doesn't have to be precise necessarily in your original design it can waver a bit and it'll still be okay but of course you want to get some ideas to like get the ball rolling i have some more potions he has this little element um it's a little timer and it actually works so there's some things that i got from hobby lobby that i decided to incorporate um which i would have loved to make by hand but you know don't have a glass blowing class i've taken yet so i can't but here's some little more potions uh, there's a lot of potions going on and his hat is once again removable and this time it's a full mushroom and here's the bottom of it you can see i did the little like i don't know what those are called little wavy bumpy things at the bottom there's also some little beads and things like that and i think that's all the elements that's on him there's also a tooth that he's just accumulated through his battles or whatever. A lot of it is like, you get to make up your own narrative about it. So I don't write too much in the cards, although I would have loved to. I wanted to have it also be more of like your own interpretation of it, just because with something whimsical like this, I think it's better to have things not always be told, you know what I mean? This says Sir Lollipops and it's stage three. And on the inside of his card, it says, hi, I'm the frog who's also a wizard. At stage three, this is my final form. And it has mushroom hat for sorcery, butterfly wing cape, glass eye, sacrificed his own eye for a potion. And then on the back, hello, I finally grown big and strong enough to be a real wizard. I still have a lot of spells to learn and even more potions to make, but I finally become a real wizard. So this is basically saying like, this is his final form. He's all grown up now, he's being a wizard. I also wanna mention that there's like beads in the butt and the legs of all of them so that they're weighted down so they are able to stand on their own like if i were just to leave him like this on a table he would stand just another aspect i was thinking about when i was like making this because i just wanted to make sure that they were fully not functional because they're toys but you know like they would function like an actual toy you would buy in a store so i thought it was important to weight them just a little bit so that you know they always land upright and they kind of have a little bit of weight to them so they kind of have a natural pose that they just like fall into so here they are, all three of them, very, very cute, and I love them. So yeah, that's the three of them. And now onto the planning for these three, which like I said, didn't have too much planning. For the frogs, oh my God, the planning was weird. I was trying to think, I was either gonna do a frog or an axolotl. I ended up doing a frog, but axolotls were cute too. And frogs are just a little bit more personal to me. And then I started thinking about different ways to do it. These are different artists that my professor wanted me to check out and I should actually circle these. So I'm gonna do that right now. Um, Felt Mistress, Red Nose Studio, and then this is just a whole bunch of them. But anyway, <laughs> there's this frog guy, it's a bell, a hat, um, pouches, wizard frog, newt, eye patch due to loss of eye, and then I ended up being, ended, oh my god, I ended up doing a glass eye instead, as you guys know. Then, um, here's a materials list I made, bring home are things that I brought home from here, I guess, because I did a lot of this at home. One last thing I want to show you is, oh, lol, I used this page as a palette. So I ended up using this page as a palette to paint the eyes and things like that. But yeah, that's pretty much all of the planning. Yeah, just some final pictures of the big frog once he's done, because I love him. And now moving on to my absolute final project. I have no words to explain how much I actually love this project. I've had very few projects at RISD where I would genuinely say I'm 100% happy with how they turned out, but I actually am 100% happy. So this project that you guys have probably seen a lot on my Instagram are these Tamagotchis. So, oh my God, do I love Tamagotchis. First of all, just a childhood, 
adornment for Tamagotchis. So the prompt was to make something based off a of memory. So I decided to make some childhood toys. The first thing I made were these Tamagotchis. And then the second thing I actually made to go with them is a really large deck of Pokemon cards, all hand painted. And I dropped a couple of them. This was basically like my passion project. Like I fell in love with doing this project. It's literally my favorite thing that I've ever made. As you can see, I made a bunch of these Pokemon cards, but first let's talk about the Tamagotchis. But it was all together one project. Like I had these displayed together with the intentions of it being one project. I'm gonna go through each of these Tamagotchis individually. I made some that are fake and some that are real. So this is not a real Tamagotchi. As you can tell, like the screen, they do look very similar though. Like this is a real one. These are the smaller versions, but if you guys remember, Tamagotchis also came in this size. This one, the first one I'm gonna go through is not real. <laughs> it's a very cute apple Tamagotchi just because I loved apples growing up. And then on here, I remember making these like keychains for the Tamagotchis when I was a kid. Um, so I wanted to make more of them for these ones. So this one says apple, but I misspelled it on purpose. And then on the other side of the beads, it all has a little apple picture, which I thought was so cute. And the bottom is secured with a button. And I just loved how this one came out. And I made these out of polymer clay and then they're glazed with resin, if you guys were wondering. And here they are. He's so cute and I love him. And they feel really, really smooth. I sanded the heck out of these things. And also resin has a tendency to like finish them all off. But this one's just a little Tamagotchi of an apple. And then the next one I have is, I love this one. So this is a Care Bear. And then it also has a keychain that says Tiff on it in star beads. But this little Care Bear, as you can see, these are like real functioning Tamagotchis. I made some fake Tamagotchis and then I also like decorated kind of, or like added on to real Tamagotchis to make them work. So for this one, they originally come in just a sphere with nothing on it. So I added the little snoot, the ears. I added this star dangle thing, which is actually like an actual thing that Tamagotchis use. Like if you guys remember that one generation of Tamagotchis that actually had these little star dangle guys, I love those ones. I added this on just because I wanted it to be reminiscent of that one. I also added on the arms and the legs and everything else is painted on. So as you can see, this is a real working Tamagotchi and I love how this came out and I love the colors. This one was actually the one I was going out on a whim about because I didn't have a plan for this one originally, which I will talk about more when I show you guys my planning process for this specific Tamagotchi because I do have a specific process for every single one of them. Here it is. So, so cute. I love the colors of this one and how it turned out. I took a risk with doing like complementary colors because sometimes they can be super clashy, but the yellow and the lilac color really went well together. So this is the little Care Bear one. And I love this one. This was my baby. This one and the next one I'm about to show you, which is a Poe. So this is a Teletubby. If you guys remember Teletubbies, I dressed up as Poe for Halloween when I was a child and I was so cute that I even made it onto the newspaper. So this one has a little key keychain, which is a reference to the Tamagotchi like land world, uh, Tama Town, I think was called. Do you guys remember that online like game? And just the music brings back memories. I found it recently and I was just like, oh my God. But sadly it doesn't function anymore. I really wish it did. I hope they're coming out with something that's like similar to it. That's what this key is in reference to and it's in a couple of them. And then this is a Tamagotchi that's also Teletubbies themed, which I thought was really cute and also has these three buttons that are fake. These are in reference to the other Teletubbies, so it's the three other colors of the Teletubbies. This one's of course Poe, and I really like the blue border. I thought that came out really well. So the next one is this guy. So this one's in reference to the actual world of Tamagotchi. They have a whole little like globe that kind of just looks like a Tamagotchi, so I want that one. And this one's one of the ones that works too. And as you can see, the little egg waiting to hatch. I've been waiting for them to hatch for a little bit. And then it also comes with this key. This one's in a heart shape. And this one's a pretty simple one. I didn't add too much on it. I added some little aliens just because I thought they were cute, but that's about it. This one's my least favorite one, just because it's really basic. But this one's not real. But you can see, because of the size of this one, you can see how similar they are in sizing. This one's just based on an actual Tamagotchi that looked like this. And the text says, love my family. And here he is. So it has a little house because there were those family Tamagotchis where you could raise a whole Tamagotchi family. And that's what I was referencing for this one. So this is pretty basic, pretty simple. And the last one I have is this one. He's a dead Tamagotchi because I didn't take care of him very well. I've been busy with school, I'm sorry. But this one's a Furby Tamagotchi, as you can see. It's very, very cute, it has pink buttons, and this one's actually playable. You can see the little guy in there. 
but this Furby, I added on the hair, the beak, the little horns, the ears, the feet. I added on a lot of elements for this one. And so I really like the way this one came out. No keychain for this one, rather simple. There's already a lot going on with the Furby. So here it is. And yeah, those are all the Tamagotchis. So for memory, I was really struggling with the concept at first. I was thinking, oh, childhood memories, collection of every single collected thing. Collection of items, toys from childhood, grandparents, coloring book, coloring book with transfer paper, which was something that I played with as a kid. Memories of grandparents in Shanghai from age two to six. Overall sleeping, colorful stickers. I was trying to list like things that I knew. And you kind of see my thought process going in because it is quite linear. It says memories of grandma, last page, and then I started planning it out. And then, oh my God, make Tamagotchis. Pokemon binder? I wasn't initially gonna make a binder for all these Pokemon cards, but I didn't get to it. I think it's really funny that I was like, oh my god, Tamagotchis. And then I decided that's what I'm gonna do. And so these were my plans. The ones with the green background are the like fake Tamagotchis I was sculpting. As you can see, I inserted pictures of what they actually ended up looking like at the bottom. And so here's the Teletubby one, the Earth one. This was the one that was a total like random improvised idea. This was the original plan was for the Care Bear one that didn't end up happening. And I'm really glad. I love the Care Bear one. This is the family one. I ended up moving the keychains over. This is the Apple one. This one turned out pretty uh, close to life. And then this one is the Furby one. And that's pretty much all the planning I had for this project. And now lastly, absolutely no planning for this deck of pokemon cards okay i'd like to give a quick shout out to my boyfriend for setting up a deck list for me so i could actually make these somewhat accurate to how you would play in a tournament i didn't make a full deck which if you guys are aware is 60 pokemon cards i have much less than 60. it's a large amount considering i hand painted all of these so i'm not going to go through every single one of these but i will be posting pictures on my instagram like i said so go follow it if you haven't already and i have copies of the same cards a lot of these are like duplicates just because that's how a deck works i grew up with pokemon cards i wanted to make my own and so these are copies of pokemon cards and i changed the writing in some of them so the change is very subtle but i just want to change it to like be like more childish this one is captivating pokepuff and it says your mom made those chocolate chip muffins again and it lured you and your neighborhood friends into the kitchen feed them to the muffins so you know i have elements like that i also spelled some of their names wrong just because you know you're a kid. Um, so this one is Adimo, apparently. And it says, do the wave, dance outside your brother's room, annoying him enough to convince him to finally let you inside. So there's cute little elements like that. I'm just gonna show you some of them. As you can see, there's just a lot of them, but I had a lot of fun doing these. And I also added those little sparkly iridescent sheets to some of these, so I was able to do that. This one, the last one being, has no planning that went into it. I literally I had my boyfriend do all the planning, so thank you to him again. Here it is, here's everything, and that's pretty much, I think, everything I have to show you guys. Yeah, so this semester's been a wild ride. Oh wait, actually, I'm gonna show you one last one that was really quick, and this one actually also has zero planning, but I'm just gonna show you. It's called the Chef's Pasta, and when you open it, it's a six foot long snake. Okay, the end says, end says this is noodle, and here it says Noodle is a snake, and that's the whole book. Um, that's just a little bit of irrelevant information I wanted to show you guys. But yeah, that's pretty much the entire semester of work. These Tamagotchis, by far my favorite thing that I've actually ever made, and I'm actually so proud. Let me know what you guys think in the comments, and I hope all the planning was interesting for you guys to watch, because I know I don't talk about like the backstory of a lot of my videos, but last year I made one of these videos, and you guys seem to like it a lot, so I hope it was equally as enjoyable this year. So yeah. Little announcement, I'm gonna be doing Vlogmas. I'm gonna be doing the 12 days of Vlogmas, which I'm actually kind of scared about, because I don't know if I'm gonna be able to be consistently upload videos every day for 12 days, but I'm gonna do my best, and we're gonna see how it goes. So yeah, Vlogmas will be starting tomorrow, actually. I wanted to hit you guys with this video really, really quickly before we got to it, and so thank you guys so much for watching and hanging out with me and doing all that stuff, and for sticking around for a whole semester. And if you guys have been watching my vlogs, I hope some of the stuff was familiar to you guys. I think it's kind of interesting um, when people are like, I remember you working on that, and then here's the final product. But with that in mind, I just wanna say thank you guys so much for hanging out with me and for sticking around and for watching my video. Leave a comment, let me know what you think, and I will see you guys in the next one. So stay hydrated, take a nap, and I will see you when I see you. Bye.